on a brand new layer I'm going to just block in my shapes and block in the entire composition that I want to for example, I know that in the foreground I want a general basic shape like this. I want a flat plane in the midground and mountains and then my architectural structure in the background. That's the image that I've got in mind. Um, that's what I've kind of conceived of in my mind's eye and I'm going to just block it, block it in in this video. And the important thing is that the viewer's eye, I want it to lead through the picture plane towards that area of interest in the background. I'm also going to add a character as well and you'll see in this section how adding in the character is going to make such a huge difference. In the previous section on the background that we worked on for the forest, we started out our painting with a lot of colour concepts just to get ideas for the composition. In this instance we're going to do it a little bit differently I'm going to start out the whole painting in this beginning phase by using, by blocking in values. Working with light and dark values to identify where your contrasts are in your painting is a really good way to do a background painting. And the way you do it, for this instance, I'm going to use my lasso tool. I'm going to very roughly draw some basic shapes. I know on the left here and coming across the middle is going to be my sort of framing area, my foreground, and that I'm going to start painting in with a dark tone because it's going to be very near in the picture plane. And I'm really using just a rough textured brush and very roughly blocking it in. The whole idea of using a grayscale or values to start out with is that you don't have to worry about color and you don't have to worry about choosing colors. What you're focusing on is making sure that your tones are contrasting nicely so that you've got a, a lot of nice dark tones and a lot of lighter tones throughout the piece. Contrast, as I've said before, is what's going to make your picture look dynamic and strong visually. So this is the foreground. I know I also want a little uh, rocky outcrop in, in, over in this section. Uh, this is also going to help lead the viewer's eye towards the center of the picture plane. Again, I'm not being too precious about what it looks like or about the painting at this stage. Um, I'm experimenting here a tiny bit with where the light source is coming from, but keeping it very simple. So that's it. Those are my two foreground layers. And the next thing that I'm going to do before moving further into the piece is I want to create a neutral tone in underneath everything. So I'll make a new layer just above the background layer. You could do it on the background layer as well. It doesn't matter. And from my color picker, I'm going to just choose a light neutral tone, just something to take away that glaring white background. Then I want to make sure that I don't paint on that. So on a layer above it, I'm going to block in my midground. And again, I'm using the lasso tool to make these very kind of rocky organic shapes and then painting in with the textured brush. And now for the sort of flat plane in the midground, I can actually just use the bucket tool and just fill it so it's just one flat tone and I'll merge those two together. So that's my midground and my two foreground elements which I'm keeping separate at this stage so that I can move them around if I need to. All right so the last thing then is just to block out this architectural shape that I want to have in the background, the building or structure. Um, I originally thought I was going to make kind of a ruined city or a ruined temple but as as I go I think I'm going to keep it a bit simpler than that and just make it like one structure one uh, building that's off in the background 
So the the whole look and feel of this painting is going to be a little bit otherworldly and a little bit sci-fi-esque. So, you know, you can get away with creating a background or creating a structure or an architectural shape that's a little bit different or unique. It doesn't have to be based on anything in real life. So what I'm going for is quite a blocky geometric shape that will contrast with the organic shapes of the rocks. And for now, just something like that. I will fill it with a lighter tone because it's the area of interest and I want it to be catching as much of the light in this painting as possible. Now to set that off, obviously I want something in the background, um, another kind of mountain or cliff face or something like that. And now I can bring texture in onto this mid-ground plane because the light is going to definitely be falling on that sort of desert plane in the mid-ground and catching a lot of light. So the last thing is let's put in some faraway mountains, faraway hills to bring in the sense of scale. You know, if you've got small mountains way off in the background it really gives your painting that sense of depth and vastness and that's really what I want to achieve with this background. All right so that's it that's my rough composition done and I'm actually very pleased with the kind of the entire look of it I think there's the tones the really dark foreground tones as well as the midground kind of add great contrast and I think it's going to look really well. I'm happy with that and as I said it just took me a few minutes to rough it out using the lasso tool, the bucket tool to you know dump in kind of tone and also the brush tool and we're ready to go. So meet me in the next video and I'm going to show you how to establish your light source and how to start kind of creating that sense of light coming into the into the piece. I'll see you in the next video.